everyone welcome back so today's halloween tutorial is going to be this little red riding hood with a really basic special effects wolf bite wound to the jaw there's plenty of tutorials with slash marks so i thought i would do teeth marks this little red riding hood costume was kindly gifted to me by the legavenuestore.com and you'll see that i'm a fan of them because i use their costumes in a lot of my tutorials so to start with i'm going to use foundation this one is the armani luminous silk foundation and I'm applying that with my MAC 130 Short Duo Fibre Brush. I've just got back from Florida, so I've got a little bit of colour to my skin. So I want something that's kind of lightweight so my skin still shows through and doesn't disguise my freckles. But obviously if you want a nice full coverage base, you can layer the foundation or you can apply something that's a fuller coverage. I'm using my Dampened Beauty Blender to push that into the skin. This is going to help even out the application and make sure it's all nice and flawless. Now I'm taking the Boy Ink Brightening Concealer by Benefit and I'm pushing that underneath the eye using my ring finger. I'm only using a very small amount and the reason I'm using my finger is because it warms up the product and that goes onto the skin better. Next I'm taking Becca's Multitasking Perfecting Powder and I'm using this to set my foundation in place. It will give you a little bit of extra coverage but I do tap off all the excess and just use it to set it in place. I'm using a light colour through the centre of the face and then I'm using a base shade around the circumference of the face. This is just going to help the face to look less flat again because foundation can do that but it still looks natural. We're going to be applying a very light amount of special effects in this area of the face so I've not applied any foundation there. I'm changing up my brow routine this week by using a different product. This is Precisely My Brow by Benefit and I'm using my Princess Mirror by Benefit as well. The reason I'm using two shades is just to create a bit more of a natural appearance to the brow. I'm using shade 2 at the front half of my eyebrow and now I'm going in with shade 3 to fill in the outer half of my eyebrow because we naturally have more sparse hairs at the front and they're fuller towards the outer half. I'm using this new palette by Zoeva called Cafe and the first shade I'm using is called Microfoam. This is a matte finish milky beige colour. I'm going to be using a limited edition set of Zoeva brushes. This is from the Zoeva Makeup Artist Zoe Bag Phenomenon. The limited edition bag and brushes will be available on the 6th of November so definitely check those out. So I'm using my smoky shader brush to apply this colour over the mobile eyelid and I'm also taking it up just above the socket line. As this is quite a light shade you want to apply a couple of layers. Next I'm taking the 238 Luxe Precision Shader Brush from the same collection and dipping into the shade Cup of Joy which is a rich espresso brown shade. I'm working the bristles onto the back of my hand to remove any excess powder and using what's left on the bristles I'm cutting the crease. To do this I'm tracing my natural socket line but taking the new line up by a millimetre or two just to make my eyelid look a little bit bigger. I did the same look with my Disney princesses. All fairy tale princesses tend to have really big eyelids, so to give us that illusion, we're gonna create a nice false crease. So I've used what's left on the bristles just to pull the color out ever so slightly. And now I'm going in with my 231 Luxe Petite Crease Brush to soften the line. As the bristles are tapered to a nice point, you can put this directly over the line that you've created and just blend that particular area. For example, if you were using a fluffy blending brush where the tip is domed or flat, you would lose the defined crease because it would just blend everything. Going back to my precise shader brush, I'm going to reapply the crease. We slowly want to intensify the line but still keeping it soft, that's why we blend it in between and then reapply it. So we get a nice gradient on the top half of that socket but we still get a defined line on the bottom half of that socket. Does that make sense? So then you just keep layering until you're happy with the intensity and the depth of that false crease. The reason I've chosen this type of brown is because it really goes with the outfit. We've got brown on the corset and the arms and this particular shade works really well and it's going to be the same with the lips. I opt for a shade that works well with the cape and the bottom half of the outfit. The next brush I'm using is the 228 Luxe Crease Brush. The bristles in this are slightly fuller, it's not as tapered as the Petite Crease Brush so I'm going to use this to blend the entire top half of that socket. I'm applying that milky beige microfoam eyeshadow to the brow bone. So I'm sticking with matte shades on the eyes. Moving on to eyeliner, I'm using my Zoeva Black Box Collection. You'll know I use this in so many of my tutorials because I love it and it's so affordable. Although changing it up this week and I'm opting to use the cat eye pen. As I have got eyelash extensions on, I don't want something that's going to seep right between the root of my eyelashes. So instead I'm using the pen because it's more precise and it's obviously not liquidy. By the way, my beautiful lashes are courtesy of my twin sister. You can check out her lash page on Instagram. She's at getlashedlashes. 
For the wing, I am going to be using the Calligraphic Liquid Liner from the Black Box Collection. I realise this is quite Zoeva heavy, it's not sponsored. They just kindly gift me products and it's up to me whether I use them. And I absolutely love Zoeva because it's affordable and the quality is so high. The reason I've switched to the liquid liner is because it's more fluid so it's just easier to create a wing. But both of them give you a nice matte finish and they're both inky black. To help make the eyes look even bigger I'm using Scandalize Cream Coal Pencil by Rimmel. This gets rid of any pinky tones, it really makes you look more awake and as I just mentioned it just helps to make your eyes look a lot bigger. Going back to my 238 brush and a small amount of the brown, I'm working that underneath those lower lashes. Doing this frames the eye, it makes the root of the lashes look fuller and this also helps to emphasise that cream colour that you've applied along the waterline. To further darken the root of the lash, we're going in with a matte black eyeshadow. This one is by Natasha Denona but any black eyeshadow would do. And I'm using the very tip of the brush to work that right between the root so that the black then fades into the brown. And again this is what I did with my Disney characters just because it gives you that nice fairy tale eye. I'm applying a light coat of mascara, this one is the Colossal Big Shot by Maybelline. Adding mascara to your lower lashes helps to balance out the top set, obviously if you don't have eyelash extensions then definitely use a pair of falsies. Moving on to the face, I'm going to go in with Benefit's Hula, this is a matte bronzer. I'm going to use my all time favourite brush which is the 127 Luxe Sheer Cheek Brush, only this time I have it in the new collection of brushes which is exciting and I'm going to use this to sculpt the cheeks. I don't think I realised how many Zoeva products that I used. I'm now going in with their Coral Spectrum Blush Palette and applying that with another favourite of mine which is their 114 Luxe Face Focus Brush and I'm applying this to the apples of the cheeks and pulling the colour backwards. Here we go again, I've got a new Zoeva lipstick which I thought would be perfect for the look. This one is called Cool In Passion. It's quite red to begin with but we're going to be going over this with a pencil. The lip liner I'm going to use is Night Moth by MAC which is a purple tone and I'm going to start by applying this to the outer corners of the lip and pulling it upwards and this is going to be the start of creating a nice gradient. Going in with my lip brush that still has a little bit of lipstick on it, I'm going to soften the pencil and blur the seams of the two and this is going to create a nice ombre appearance to the lips. Having a lighter centre to your lips makes them naturally look more pouty. So these are the special effects brushes I'm going to be using to create my wound. These are from the Delium Tools special effects box. They've kindly given me a discount code which isn't sponsored and it's 20% off. They're usually $50 but you can get them for $40. All the details will be in the description bar below. For the wound I'm going to show you two different alternatives for building up the bite mark. The first one is FX Wax which I've rolled into a little sausage and I'm putting onto the skin and I'm going to blend that out with my spatula. I do have a tutorial on how to do this in more depth which I will link on screen now for you. Wax is really good, it can give you a really realistic appearance. The only thing with wax is it's not as durable and if it gets warm it can get really sticky and the edges can come away. I want to show you that this can be really easy and because it's a theatrical look it doesn't have to be perfect. So we've made two sausages and blended the side walls into the skin. So we've created a nice open section in the middle and that's going to be the wound. When you look at real bite mark photos, they're actually very clean looking, it's just the cut, the skin around it looks untouched, so it's just about the wound itself. But for Halloween you want it to look quite theatrical, so you just need to go a bit over the top with it, otherwise it's not going to be very noticeable. And in the dark it can just look quite fake as if you've just drawn on a couple of red marks. If you're going to go to this effort you might as well make it look theatrical. So as I've already done colouring in of this before on other tutorials, I'm just showing you with the wax how to build it up. I'll move on to the alternative method and just show you how quick it is to create and that you don't have to be too neat about it because it still can be really effective. So using a red lip liner I'm just going to map out roughly where we want the wounds to be. Don't worry too much about the particular shape, this is just really more of a guidance as to how big you want the wounds to be and roughly where you want them. You don't have to use red, you can also use a white coal pencil, it's completely up to you. The next product we're going to use to build up is called Sculpt Gel. This is really affordable for the amount that you get and it's perfect for creating Halloween tutorials. You simply mix parts A and B together and this is going to be your two part silicone that you can create wounds with. I get a lot of comments from viewers saying that special effects looks can be too difficult to recreate. So I'm not going to take my time with this, I'm simply going to just go at it and just show you that even if you don't take your time with it, it can still be really effective. Using my spatula, I'm picking up a small amount of the silicone paste 
And again, like we did with the wax, I'm creating two side walls and a little bit on the very top. And then I'm just smoothing out the edges so they roughly blend into the skin. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'm going to slice through the very centre and this is going to be the open wound. Give it a couple of minutes and that will go off. I'm then going to use my Delium Tools 167 brush and I'm going to use this with some translucent powder to get rid of the shine off of the silicone. I'm then quickly going over this silicone with what's left on my foundation brush just to get rid of a little bit of that purple tone that's in there. Next up I'm going to be quite slapdash with this, I'm going to use my Skin Illustrator palette and I'm going to mix together the coral and rose adjuster tones just to add a little bit of redness around the wound. My camera will focus in a minute I promise. On a real bite mark, the redness that we're going to be recreating around the wound wouldn't necessarily be visible but as it's Halloween we do want it to be visible when we're out in the dark trick or treating or if you're at an event. What I will say though is if you don't take your time with silicone you will get a bit of rippling around the edges and once you start to paint this it can become quite visible but again it's a theatrical look so just don't worry too much. I've created a few tutorials using Sculpt Gel in the past and you can get a really clean smooth finish. If you want to see how to do that then check out my Yondu tutorial. Next I'm going to use my 110 Delium Tools splatter brush and I'm just using a very small amount of the coral adjuster and the rose adjuster to splatter over the area. This is very very subtle but it's just going to add a little bit of uneven skin tone just to make it look a little bit aggressive. This is an optional step, it isn't something you have to do. Then I'm taking my 116 Delium Tools brush, this is a small pointed brush which is going to allow us to paint inside the wound. I'm now using a couple of tones from my FX Skin Illustrator palette and these are the blood shades. As you can see I'm not being precise about it, this is just about getting it done as quick as possible to show you that even if you're not experienced in using this stuff it can be done to a theatrical degree that's perfect for Halloween. I've used the tip of the brush to create different tones of red in the wounds just to add some depth and I'm now going in with a very small amount of black. This will give the appearance that there's some congealed blood in there which makes it look darker. So no Halloween look would be complete without a bit of blood but first of all I'm going to put my cape on from my beautiful outfit and then I'm just going to drip a small amount of blood into the wound, only on a couple of them and then I'm going to go in with some tissue and smear that onto the skin so it looks a little bit more theatrical. This is for those of you that have no experience in creating special effects that still want it to look half decent but are worried that you can't recreate some of the professional looks that are on the channels. So this literally took no time at all to create and you can see it's still really effective even if it isn't 100% perfect. So for those of you that are new to special effects, give this a go and tag me in your pictures because I would love to see how you get on. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you. If you haven't subscribed, then the subscribe button is on screen now, as is my Halloween playlist if you've missed any of my previous tutorials. And if you'd like to follow me outside of YouTube, my social handles are on screen. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!